Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bash Mania podcast. I am your host, as always, Justin Bash, and this is episode 178. Today, my friend Jason Nolf joins the podcast once again to talk about his World Cup experience, this new ocean company that he co-founded that launches today, and a slew of other topics. So it's going to be a great show. Before we dive in, this podcast is brought to you by our great friends at Attack, A-T-A-C, Attack. And guys, if you listen to this podcast, you know how much I love the Attack app, how I think it's like having a coach, a trainer, all in one, all in your pocket. And they have so many cool things going on right now. They just launched Attack teams so that you can get the power of attack for your entire team where their professionals will help you create a custom schedule for your team they'll onboard your entire roster help you track their progress super super cool stuff on the team front they also recently launched an investor campaign through what's called smart engine so if you want to invest in attack you can buy partial shares I think it's like a dollar fifty-one a share with a minimum two hundred dollars investment, something like that. So go check that out. Tweet me, tweet Attack if you have any questions. Attack is an amazing training app for wrestlers. ATAC download in the Apple App Store, download in the Google Play Store today, and be sure to follow them. Reach out to Nick Roy if you want interest. I believe he's handling the Attack teams. So super cool stuff. Shout out, uh, shout out to Attack. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Jason Nolf, back on the show. How are you, man? Doing good. Uh, I'm excited to be here. It's going to be an exciting week. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. You launched a new company. Before we kind of dive into that, we'll talk about a couple other things. First and foremost, the last time you were on the show, we left it one of the most talked about segments of 2022. You and Kyle yeah. Snyder, ping pong. This is coming. <laughs> what What is the follow up? How has that rivalry gone? He won't play me anymore. <laughs> we haven't played one game. I remember. Then. It's funny because sometimes people think like it's only talked about in the show. Like when I saw you guys, I think we were in the back at the Ruta Supercard, and it got a little contentious. Kyle's a little upset. <laughs> oh. He gets frustrated because I call him out for what it is. He he took the lead in the series and then he never played me again. <laughs> he, and then he's like, Oh, I have a baby. I can't go play. Cause I have a baby. Oh, I can't play. Cause it's cause I have a wife and you know, all this stuff, you know, making excuses now, but the baby's new, which I'm excited for him. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I didn't uh, know he had a baby. Congrats to, to Snyder on that one. Yeah. Um, are you still playing a lot? No, because I don't have anybody that's competitive. All right. Well, I guess we can take applications for listeners that want to play. If maybe they think like they should, I think they should be able to submit their resume. Yeah. You, you can't just like, this isn't play ping pong for free with Jason Nolf hour. Like you got to submit yourself as a worthy opponent. You got to yeah. submit your credentials. Maybe we can set up a, a sponsored match. Well, you know what happened was Kyle, Kyle, uh, he started beating me in ping pong, which that doesn't mean he's the better player. It's just he was beating me at a certain point in time, took yep. the lead, and then quit. And then he's tried to start beating me in golf. And he won't ever beat me in golf. I'll give him 20 years. So that's something we can do together now because he'll keep, he'll, keep, he'll keep playing until he beats me, but he'll never beat me in that. So we'll yeah, be able to I, I feel like that's a backwards turn. Like he's got a better shot. At ping pong than golf, I feel mm -hmm. like he could have, but he doesn't want to like, he doesn't want to put it on the line. Yeah, it makes sense. He doesn't want to put his reputation on the line. It's like the opposite of him in wrestling. Like he went and wrestled best and poor, <laughs> and, you know, he wants to wrestle the biggest matchups, but when it comes to, you know, ping pong and all these other sports, he doesn't want to put it on the line. Like his, his, his reputation is too valuable to him at that point, I guess. Man, Snyder, if you're listening, I mean, this is these are fighting words. Speaking of World Cup, that's actually what I want to talk to you a little bit about next. How was that? You competed in the World Cup this past weekend in Iowa City. It just got back, I assume. How was the whole experience for you? It's pretty interesting. Uh, we got two kilos, so it made the weight cut a little easier. Um, I always find a hard, I always find a way to like make the weight cut a little hard though. Uh, so, you know, whether it's getting bigger, I mean, I, I, it took, I, 
I did it for about three weeks. I, I started getting my weight down for about three weeks. And then I did like, a you know, my weight descent plan, uh, and it, it all worked out pretty good. I made weight really good. And, uh, but it was difficult even with the two kilos. And then, so basically there was two guys at each weight yeah. and going into the weekend, I was just assuming that I would wrestle all the matches. I, I was assuming that the, like the number one guy, uh, well, since Dake didn't go, that made me the number one guy. Um, I was assuming that I would have like the choice in the matches. And then right before, like right after weigh-ins, I like chugged all my water, like, you know, drank my protein shake and fueled up and I was getting ready to warm up. And then like Joe Russell came over and was like, Hey, Vincenzo's wrestling this morning. Uh, you're going to wrestle tonight. And I'm like, what the heck? So that like, uh, I, I went and talked to Chenzo. I'm like, Hey, like they told me you're wrestling. Like if you wrestle, I'm happy for you. Like it's nothing as you guys know, like Vincenzo is like one of my best friends, but I also told him, Hey, I'm going to like try to wrestle. Like I'm going to like fight this yeah. a little bit. And because I, I came and, you know, I wanted to, I, I, I just was under the impression, like basically what everybody was telling me was that I would have the choice to wrestle all the matches. And, uh, so Chenzo was like, yeah, dude, I understand. Like, I'm also going to fight to wrestle. I'm like, all right, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, but then yeah, nothing changed. So, uh, Vincenzo got to wrestle in the morning, which was good. Um, and then I wrestled at night. The one thing that bothered me was the reason that they gave me, uh, that I wasn't going to wrestle was they wanted to give me more time to recover from the weight cut. And I'm like, I don't need any time to recover. <laughs> like, I don't care how much weight I'm cutting. Like I'm going to, I'm going to be able to like compete hard right away. Like, and right. you know, I'm in really good shape. So that was weird. Uh, that was like the only weird thing. Uh, if they would have just been like, no, like we just want Chen Vincenzo to wrestle because that's because we just want that. We think that's best for the team or whatever. Yeah. That would have been saying they needed to give me time to adjust to the weight cut. <laughs> I was just so, but yeah, I was pretty mad in the, in the moment, but I've got over it. I understand. Uh, they have a game plan. Um, they, they're going to do what's best for USA wrestling and um, what they think is best for USA wrestling at least. And, uh, and we won the world cup. So that's pretty exciting. I, I guess I can kind of just go on to the next match, uh, you know, competing at, uh, against Georgia. Um, I wrestled that guy. He was pretty tricky. Uh, he kept trying to like throw his head behind my arm and just do like kind of junk moves, um, right. cross throws and, and stuff like that. But I was just, my goal was to get on top and get four turns. And the first time I got on top, uh, I hit, I hit a nice duck and I went to turn Beautiful. him and yep. he was trying to, uh, he tried to like hold my arm so that he was trying to trap me on my back when I went for the gut. So I kind of let that one go. And then he did something weird for the next scoring sequence. He, uh, he like, he got behind me, but then I stepped over him and ended up getting his leg shelved on the opposite side and scoring. And then I, uh, faked one side and went the other side for the gut. So I did get a turn, I ended up, you know, getting the tech fall in that match, which was, which was good, but I definitely got pretty tired in that match. Um, and then, Iran, uh, wrestled that guy. Uh, I thought I wrestled a pretty good match. Um, I controlled the center of the mat. I was offensive. I was snapping them. Um, I think a lot of my shots were too straight on and predictable. So, uh, um, you know, going into the second period, I was, I was good. I, I wasn't tired at all in that match. Um, you know, second period, uh, James Green was in the corner. He said, Hey, like you got to go out there and they're going to, they're looking to put you on the clock. So you got to go like start shooting a lot. Um, because I was up one, nothing. So I did, um, I followed his direction and they did put him on the clock, but then we were an over under and I kind of got, I was focusing on his underhook side, uh, cause he didn't really have any shots. So I was thinking, you know, maybe he's going to try to do like a, a throw by, right. but I defended his underhook side pretty well. But then I let my, I let my underhook side mm -hmm. slip. And that's when he dragged me, got his head behind and trapped my arm. And, uh, you know, after that, I kind of just sat, I, I attacked, but I sat in the tie ups a little bit too long and over under tried to lat drop. Um, and you know, there was no score there. So definitely a lot that I learned. Um, I was back in the room today. I was in the room yesterday. 
Um, we flew back and I got back in at 11 a.m. yesterday and then I went and recovered. And then today uh, started working on some things. Um, I think that there's a lot that I can improve on, like underhooks, underhook wise. I was trying some two on one stuff like Seth Gross. Uh, <laughs> I just think I need to um, I need to be consistent with what I'm doing, but I also need to continue to add to my uh, repertoire um, so that when guys are just really defensive, I, you know, I have more options. So I'm, I was also working, you know, Burroughs as it does a really good job of um, scoring late. So just like seeing, seeing how he wrestles and, you know, he doesn't really hang in ties. He, he blasts through you. And then if you down block, he just keeps moving his knees and like uh, continuing to shoot and not like he doesn't shoot and then stop and then try to set you up and then shoot. He's just like constantly, um, so I'm trying to learn from that a little bit, but that's a lot of wrestling talk, a lot of technicality stuff. Um, but I got to imagine though, it sounds like even like you don't ever want to lose, but it sounds like that loss was a little bittersweet where it's like, you don't want to lose, but you also, it's it seems to me, it's easier to hone in on things you can work on in a close loss like that. You know where you have to be to win a world championship. So you know where you have to be to be to win the Olympics. So I imagine there's an aspect to it that's bittersweet because it does give you stuff to work on. Yeah, it gives me stuff to work on, but it's mostly just bitter. Yeah, not, I get <laughs> I, that. I, I mean, I can't imagine anybody that hates to lose more than I do. Like, it just makes me sick to my stomach and puts me in such a horrible mood. Um, but then you got to realize you got to, you got like, you got to, be a good person and like still like show good character through stuff like that. And, um, you know, and it's always just back to work. And like you said, there is a, there is a, a benefit to losing. Um, like I hate losing, but there, I, I'd be, uh, wrong if I said there wasn't a big benefit to it because, you know, you do have to go and reassess and continue to work on new things. And, um, yeah, but I was, I was pretty mad for about, 24 hours <laughs> yeah i bet it's funny because it's not funny it, it's sad for me like i work very closely with you with yanni burros and all three of you took a loss and i know you guys very well and it seems to me like I, you can probably speak to more because you're there but like our team in defeat is very humble like there are some guys that lose in wrestling and throw a tantrum they're very like you know, you see Burroughs, for example, take, I think that's only the sixth foreigner to ever beat him. And he's right out there after being a good sport, taking pictures with people, cheering on his teammates. That does also, I imagine, help when you're around like minded teammates that handle defeat well and maturely as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, that that's really tough. Like for me, I, I, I went back and, well, I had, to get, I had to get drug tested so that I was gone for the... Uh, Did you pass the drug test? Everything good? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I was back there watching the matches on my phone. But, yeah, I mean, just like, I think, like, practicing gratitude in those moments. Um, like, uh, I saw Zane Richards back there, you know, just, hey, Zane, good job. You know, that was a fun match to watch. Like, when you practice gratitude and, like, and then you see Nate Jackson, like, you know, I saw him as soon as I got out of my drug test. I was like, hey, Nate, awesome job. Like, that's a great win. Like, I think uh, when you when you speak gratitude and not not just like uh, think it or necessarily when you speak it, it I think that changes your um, attitude as well and allows you to, like, be a little bit happier in the circumstance, even though, you know, it does suck. But, yeah, like like you said, Jordan was – out and cheering everybody on and um it definitely helps to have people like that um around to give you a good example of like uh what a like what a good person should be doing and what a good character in the sport should be doing so and if i could be that influence to other people as well um it's it's just really hard to to do in the moment you just have to do it you have to like just i mean losing sucks and everybody hates it but you just have to like you just have to do it all the time. <laughs> just be a good and, example. And, and that's one of the reasons I bring it up is because, you know, you, Burroughs, Yanni, like 
I know you guys, so I know how you you guys don't just put on a show if something doesn't go your way. You're you're genuinely who you are, and I think that's a valuable lesson for anybody listening. Defeat in any kind, whether you compete in a sport and business, the, how you handle loss, defeat, all that stuff is very important. So I, I think it's good for the sport. It sucks when any of you know our guys lose, but there is a positive in that. Um, changing gears a little bit, a couple things I want to talk to you about. Before I talk to you about what I really want to talk to you about, which revolves around content, I will say we're seeing more North content, which I love. We talk about content all the time. I'm noticing a lot of casual MMA content. One of your best friends, Bo Nickel, successful MMA fighter now. Anthony Kassar, successful MMA debut. Is Jason Nolf MMA? Is there something to all this MMA content we're seeing? Well, it all kind of started because I developed a really good relationship with a lot of the guys down in Texas. Um, so there's a lot of jujitsu guys down in Texas, uh, the, the B team guys, the Fight Factory guys. Um, and some guys from Gordon's gym, uh, new wave. Um, so I like being around, uh, I like doing jujitsu. Like I, I started doing it and I went down there to help them with wrestling. Um, but I like doing jujitsu and I like rolling around and stuff. Uh, so, um, you know, developing a relationship with those guys. And I also realized that, uh, there's a huge market in jujitsu. Um, you know, there's, there's tons of tons and tons of jujitsu players. I think that's what they call them. I don't know. Fighters, <laughs> uh, but around the world that just do it as a hobby. So jujitsu yeah. is way bigger than wrestling. Like, uh, participation wise, I would imagine, especially like, like adult, like adult jujitsu classes are super popular. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's thousands of gyms across the country. So, um, you know, I think that's a, that's a good avenue to go into for content as well, because people love to see that kind of stuff. So, but I also enjoy doing it and, um, you know, I, I'm definitely planning on competing in jujitsu, uh, after 2024. And I also started training MMA a little bit, but like, I wanted to actually get a couple fights in before 2024, but, uh, I, my schedule for wrestling is just so, uh, particular yeah. that I don't really have time to get a, to train, to get like a good training, uh, month and a half in for fighting because I have competitions scheduled all the way through the Olympics. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to compete jujitsu and I also might fight as well. Um, I love every time I go to fights, like every time I watch a fight on TV or every time I go to Bo's fight or Anthony's, you know, I haven't been to any Anthony's fights yet. He only had one, but, uh, it just, I just feel like I can get in there and I'm like, I could just take those guys down. Like, yeah, well, I'd have to, I mean, I ha you have to have good stand up and like avoid getting hit and stuff. But I mean, we have really good coaches here in state college, uh, like Bo's a good coach for himself. And then we have our striking coach and then they bring guys in as well that teach you how to keep distance and, you know, and to strike and how to enter your takedowns. So does uh, seeing Bo's success give you more confidence? Yeah. Like I'm assuming you I know you're gonna say that you're confident regardless, but seeing his success has to just ignite that fire even more. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it, it's it's sweet. I mean, you go out there and uh you got your agents with you and they you know, they buy you a bunch of steak dinners and uh you eat a bunch of good food, <laughs> you hang out with uh your best friends and and then you go uh, beat somebody up and then you go eat some more steak. And I'm like, that's fun. Like what a different world from wrestling, like going to like the Bill yeah. Farrell, then YAC. You know? yeah. it's like, I mean, you're in Las Vegas. So it's like, you know, you're, you're in a cool city. Like uh, I like, I like doing stuff. Like I like spending time with my friends. Like a lot of my friends, I, ha I still have good friends in wrestling. Um, but like, you also have like your coaches that are always with you and, uh, and you're staying in a hotel. Like when we go out to the fights, like we're staying in an Airbnb, it's me, Bo, John, Anthony, Moose, you know, uh, you know, some other guys in there. And, uh, it's just, we're just hanging out as boys for like five days in a row. And then like, you know, you're going into a fight and your boys got your back. And I just think that's so sick. Like, that's what, that's what gets me excited. 
Yeah, the the fellowship and camaraderie around UFC, like especially the week of, is so cool to watch. Like even if I'm not watching a fight, UFC embedded is so fun. Like watching that week up. I think Bo did a great job posting content around that before his last fight, you know, showing all you guys at that Airbnb and stuff. Like that is such a different feel than wrestling. And right now you're kind of seeing both. Like you're going to Iowa City for the World Cup. You're also going to Vegas for a fight for Bo. <laughs> it's like what a different world. All right. So speaking of content, friends in MMA, friends in jujitsu, wrestling. You've got something new going on yesterday or today, actually. Well, this is coming out Wednesday. So yesterday, a lot of the top wrestlers, Keegan O'Toole, Roman, Kirk, everybody's posting ocean content. (laughs) John lost his wrestling jokes account, (laughs) 87,000 followers. His meme page is dead and it's now ocean. So tell me, I already know what it is, but tell everybody listening what ocean is. Yeah. Yeah, so me and Gino Morelli actually met about a year and a half ago, and we both had a similar idea on what we want to do, and it's it's changed a lot. Um, but right now, and this is what it will be, um, you know, moving forward, but it's a social network for wrestling and jujitsu instruction, basically. And you can engage with the top athletes in, in, in either sport and, you know, ask them questions directly and learn from them. So it's a really good opportunity for, you know, people that are trying to get better at wrestling or jujitsu to go on there and see wrestling and jujitsu content, you know, and it, and it's free to create your account. You know, you sign up and you get to follow your favorite instructors or your friends and who, based on who you follow, it's just like Facebook, you know, that stuff is going to show up on your timeline. So if you're a wrestler, you're going to follow your favorite wrestlers, you know, Bo Nickel, Amita Lohr, uh, Rome Bravo Young, et cetera. And, you know, their content is going to be popping up on your, on your main feed. And we basically have two features right now. We're going to be continuously uh, adding. We're a new company. So uh, we're in beta right now. And so any feedback is always welcome. Um, And if everything's not perfect, uh, don't worry about it because we're continuously working to make it better. But we wanted to roll out our product now and uh, just get it, get it going. But our two features are instructional videos. Uh, Our instructional videos actually have a discussion forum underneath them so that you can ask questions to the technique right there. And uh, the person that's teaching the instructional can respond directly to you and answer your questions. And then our second feature that we're starting with are subscription groups. So these are basically exclusive content feeds that you can follow your favorite gyms, clubs, or instructor. So it's built for martial arts. So it's not just, it's you kind of compare it to Patreon. Um, but we're building it specifically for wrestling and jujitsu um, and striking eventually. But um, so like we have like wrestling clubs on there that can post their content that they're already teaching in class, just have somebody film it and then upload it. And then their members can have access to that as an extra learning tool if they can't make practice or, you know, if they want to review before a tournament. But then you also have the individual athletes accounts like let's just use myself as an example. I have Jason Ulf techniques, tips and tricks on there. And I'm going to be posting, you know, four to five, at least a week, uh, four to five videos, at least a week. Um, I'll be posting competition breakdowns, um, where I screen record myself in the corner and, you know, break down all my matches. Um, I'll be, t- uh, posting live roles. So that includes jujitsu roles and wrestling roles, um, you know, technique videos, uh, mindset stuff. So, you know, you can basically, if you subscribe uh, per month, you get access to all of my stuff. So those are those are our two main features, but we're excited to get it rolling. Um, you know, today's our launch. So uh, make sure you check it out at app.athletesocean.com and create your free profile and and then just start, start going, looking around. And obviously any support that you guys uh, offer is, is amazing. So, yeah, and I love it because... I think it's unique to the sport. And I think that's one way sports grow, you know, is like attack sponsors this podcast. I love attack. They're an app. They're a workout app where it's very specific, like workouts and training like that. You have companies like Fanat fanatics that just sell certain technique. This is interesting because it's a social network. There's the discussion feature. There's that social aspect to it of 
posting content on the go. So I think when you have all these different ways, like if I'm a high school wrestler nowadays, I'm signing up for all this stuff. I'm going to have the attack app on my phone. I'm going to download something from Fanatics if I really want to see a specific piece of technique. And then I'm going to live on this platform because I'm going to go through. So I think it's very, one of the reasons I love it is because I think it just adds value to everything else in the space where a lot of times you see somebody try to just reinvent something and say, I can do this better. I think you guys did a good job of finding a void and kind of adding more value to the training space. So I love it. What what was getting all these athletes on board? Obviously, you're you're very well known. You're a popular wrestler. It's it's one of the first times we're kind of starting to see athlete led companies in wrestling and get other athletes on board. And you guys didn't just limit this to athletes within Scrap Life. You got some rudest athletes on there. You didn't just do Penn State wrestlers you got keegan o'toole you guys really kind of branched out what was that process like for you getting these athletes on board to be a part of it yeah i mean like you said our relationships you know and you know being a penn state wrestler has obviously given me a, a lot of network uh to reach out to these guys and um yeah it was just you know it's funny because when we first started reaching out to athletes to get them involved we didn't even have a product so we're just like <laughs> we have like a pitch deck and we're yep. just speaking through a PowerPoint and, you know, some guys and most guys were pretty interested, but like, it was hard to like get them fully committed, uh, without, uh, without having a product. So once we started having a product, it was easier to get people, you know, pretty much anytime we get somebody on the zoom, they're, they're interested in, uh, you know, and then I meet with them in person too. Like, uh, when I was out in Iowa, I met with Alex Marinelli and, uh, Pat Lugo and Caleb Young and, and they're interested too. So, Alex, they're, they're all in, they're going to, you know, film with us as well. So we're going to get some Iowa guys, um, you know, Vincenzo guys out in Arizona state. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely like building this business has definitely been like really difficult as, as you know, I'm sure as a, you know, a business owner as well, there's a lot that you have to adjust to and a lot that you have to learn. Um, you know, and that's, it's all about sacrifice too. Like you have to sacrifice other things that you want to do in order to, you know, work on the company. Yeah. There'd be times where I'd be like, I kind of, I want to go golfing. And then I'm like, well, if I go golfing, then my, the rest of my team's on working right now. I can't go golfing. I got to get, I got to work. Cause like, yeah. you know, um, so just learning sacrifice and, you know, the stuff wrestling taught me a lot, uh, from that as well. But I mean, you know, just keeping your calendar updated, there's like all the little like details that you need to like be so diligent with in a, in a business. And yeah, I'm so happy to, to be at the point where we're at a year and a half later. Uh, it's pretty exciting, but yeah, I mean, we're a brand new company and uh, we have plans to continuously evolve the product and make it better for the athletes uh, that are selling content and for the athletes that are buying the content as well. So we wanted to, the a big part of this, uh, there's like two main reasons we want to start the company. One is because we want to give, uh, you know, senior level athletes and college athletes, a, uh, you know, another way to make income instead of having to travel and do camps everywhere. And, uh, like, like, as you know, content is becoming really big and, and, yep. uh, you know, online learning is becoming really big. So, and then another thing is we want to serve the, serve the athletes that, uh, you know, that are younger that want to learn and, you know, continuously evolve. One thing about our, platform is you know if you go on instagram you can see a technique video uh but then the next thing you see is you know some dance some tiktok dance and then you see uh, <laughs> right. and then you see a football highlight so everything right. on our social media it's all based on you know learning technique and you can comment on on all the posts and you know ask questions so it's it's not just like there's interaction as well and that's what people want they want to interact with their favorite athletes so yeah, I mean, I'm as you can tell, I'm pretty fired up about it. <laughs> yeah, and because a lot of, you know, he, like he mentioned, there's MMA and jiu-jitsu on there, but because a lot of this podcast is wrestling fans, like just to name a few, Keegan O'Toole, Roman Bravo Young, Nick Lee, Nolf, Carter Strachey, Matt Kolodzik, Reese Humphrey, Alec Pantelio, Max Dean, Braxton Amos, Kirk Philippe, Bo Nickel, um, Nathan Tomasello, Alex uh, Marinelli. Uh, like, there's so many on there that I like the the 
description of like Patreon for wrestling. Like there's so much content there that, and that's usually the hardest part of launching anything like this is when it's feed driven, you need a lot of content. I, I was going through it earlier today and I saw the video you put out like two months ago, like welcome new users. Like, yes, this is new. Like your feed might look a little bare while we continue to grow, but it's funny, even since you posted that like two months ago, how much content there is now. And you can start to see people that are really plugging in and it's going to be cool too. One thing that I would suggest for anyone listening who, who signs up and goes on here, definitely make recommendations to your favorite athletes because they want to know every top athlete for the most part has the conversations, whether it's with people like me, whether it's their friends, teammates, whoever on what kind of content do people want to see? Tell them, like reach out and say, like, if if Jason's posting content around, you know, the World Cup and you're very curious about his mindset or praying before a match, whatever it might be, comment that. Reach out to these athletes because it only gives them more insight on what you know. So many times wrestlers like you, Jason, want to talk to your fans, but they don't necessarily ask you. They just want to kind of sit there and wait for you to post something. So anybody listening and Jason, I don't know what the best way for them to reach out to you and other athletes is, but I know that's definitely beneficial for everybody. Yeah. I mean, comment, comment on my posts, you know, I, so basically, you know, I have, I, I post actually a lot of stuff for free actually on the feed as well. There's a free feed um, that, so basically, uh, athletes can post things for free or they can post them behind their subscription group. So there's a lot of stuff out there for free. And if, if you don't want to like, uh, you know, buy anything until, you know, what you want is up there, just be like, Hey, like you should teach an instructional video on uh, leg laces, or you should teach an instructional video on your snap down series or whatever. Uh, yeah. you know, and then I can go and do that and then provide that for you. And, um, and since it's such a new platform, like there's not going to be, you know, hundreds and hundreds of comments to go through, like, we're going to see your comment and we're going to like tailor to the early users. So yeah, uh, that's, that's a big thing as well. So I actually, you, guys have, are, you have what I actually have a free instructional. If you create your, if you create a profile, you're automatically enrolled into my overtime snaps instructional on the site. So I was just going to say, there is, I'm on it now. There is a lot of content you guys have already put out. Killer Crater, Killer Cradles from Keegan O'Toole, Slow Feet Don't Eat from Roman, um, Dominating Top Position by Nick Lee, High Crotch Mastery by Carter. Who filmed all this content? You guys have a ton of instructional video already. Yeah. Yeah. Our man, John Broughton. So, we, I mean, we've been, we've been working hard on this. And we actually, I mean, we have probably... 30 to 40 more people that want to film with us, but we don't, we, uh, we're, we're consistent. We got to take our time because we only have one videographer right now. So we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're actually building a videographer network. Um, and John's, John's taking the lead on that. He's doing a great job. So we're going to be able to start filming at a, at a larger scale, but we just, we've just had one guy filming all of our instructionals so far. So, I mean, he's been really busy, you know, creating all the content for our social media. And, you know, we provide our athletes with uh, social media posts for, uh, for promoting their video. We're going to, we're going to actually do uh, something where we have, we basically promote two people a week and then we're going to have them promote each other as well. And we'll match them up based on, you know, social media following. And yeah. we're just going to, we're going to pump out stuff for them and, you know, promote them to all week. So and we'll have a, two new people every week. So um yeah it's i mean john john's john's the man yeah i'm I'm watching right now the overtie snaps mass mastery by jason Nall. the quality is absolute top notch you saw during covid a lot of wrestlers putting out content because it was something to do this isn't that like this is top notch high quality video and i love like somebody somebody commented a question on your videos like is there a reason why at nine minutes and 56 seconds you switch your stance after getting the collar tying wrist control and you answered them you know gave them a two paragraph explanation and that's super cool i i love this dude i i'm super excited i know i've kind of known about it for i don't know what was the first time we talked about like a year ago i feel like 
probably a year ago. It, it was a while ago, and watching it progress is, is awesome. And like you said, it's still in beta. I mean, I've been building websites for 15 years. What beta means is, yes, you're going to see a bug. You're going to see a glitch. You're going to see something funky. Just let them know. It gets fixed in like a day. Don't be shy with, with bugs and glitches. I know how sometimes people are like, so yeah, I'm yeah. excited. I, I'm very excited for this, this to launch. It rolls out today. We're recording this Tuesday, but it's coming out Wednesday morning and it is going to be live everywhere. What is next for the platform that as people are on is, is the biggest thing going to be like more instructionals is it more athletes. Like what can people really look forward to with it? Yeah, I mean, we're going to continuously add new athletes and new instructional videos. And, you know, we're going to have uh, new athletes and new gyms and clubs create subscription groups. Um, that's just like, I mean, we've been basically doing all of the sales, basically me and Gino Morelli, my my partner. And there's only two of us. So we're, we're trying to like find a way to automate the process and everything. But there's going to continuously be more and more content and stuff on there and we're going to be rolling out new features as well uh one feature that we'll eventually have probably in about six months uh it's ready to go now but we're going to wait a while before we uh before we release it as virtual private lessons so you know you can book a meeting with me and you know we can scout your opponent or we can just talk or you know we can talk about mindset or you know watch film or do whatever uh you know and then yeah, so that that's an that's another feature that's going to be released as well. I I have a non-ocean question for you. Where in the world is your wife right now? She's in Scotland. Well, yeah. So Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I Maddie, love that she posts content around it. It's, it's such it's such a unique opportunity. She has a goal setting coach uh, that helps her uh, with goals and writing them down, and um, it's been really helpful for her. So one of her, I mean. I think one of her goals was to like build her social media following, uh, you know, for soccer because yeah. a lot of soccer is like, who's going to, you know, who, who, who are the fans coming to watch? Like yeah. who are they buying to see? I mean, you could be not good at soccer and have a big following and then your, your team will play you because it gets the fans in the stadium. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Maddie's an amazing player and, uh, but she's never cared about social media, but I was like, you know, in that sport, you know, that's something that you might want to look into uh you know because it's so subjective but she's been she's been doing an amazing job out in scotland um you know having a lot of playing time and uh so she's actually coming home tomorrow uh for a couple weeks um over christmas and then she'll go back in january back to scotland until may and we don't want to do this long term i mean eventually i want to have kids <laughs> um <laughs> You know, I think right now being in Scotland's best for her career. And then, um, you know, until she get until she can come back to the United States, probably in 2024. How has that been? Last thing, and I'll let you go. How has that been? Like you guys are both very high level athletes, professional athletes, and you're both like rooting for each other very much on the opposite sides of the world. Like she's competing in Scotland and you're wrestling in Iowa City in the World Cup. It's crazy. Yeah. What has that dynamic been like? It's just difficult, like not being with your wife. Yeah. You know, I'm sure anybody that's listened to this, I mean, some people were like, uh, I actually stay a couple extra hours at work. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, but like, like, I mean, you know, anytime you, uh, or especially like, like for me, you know, I just don't like being away from her at all. So it's something that we've kind of gotten used to a little bit, but it's still like, it still like stinks that part of it. But at the same time, like we, we believe in each other and we believe in each other's goals and dreams and stuff. So, and we want the best for each other. So we're constantly praying and, you know, uh, you know, just trusting that the decisions that we make are God's will for us. And, um, and she said something pretty cool a couple weeks ago. She said, Hey, if you ever want me to quit soccer, like, just let me know and I'll do it. Wow. I'm like, wow. Like, that's something that, I mean, she would have never said that before, but she said that. And I thought that was pretty cool and inspiring. So um, that meant a lot to me. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to tell you to quit soccer. Like <laughs> right. maybe like if you're like 60 years old, I'm like, all right, maybe it's time to stop now. <laughs> but like, as long as she's like, as long as she's believing in herself and, you know, loving it, like keep doing it. I'm going to eventually, uh, I would say 
in a few years, I'm going to move wherever she's at. And I was uh, going to ask that, like, obviously it's kind of hard in Scotland probably to wrestle and try to make an American world team. But with soccer, it, it seems like getting a home base in soccer is a bit more difficult than in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. I think that in wrestling and even jujitsu, like, you know, when I start competing jujitsu, like there's tons of jujitsu gyms and you can go really anywhere. So, and you know, I'm at, I'm at the point where, you know, I'm still learning wrestling and still always trying to get better, but I could also go, uh, you know, find somewhere, you know, you know, and that, that would be only to, to be able to live with my wife. Like I wouldn't want to live Penn state for anything else. Um, but you know, when it comes down to it, I, uh, you know, I'll consider, I'll consider, you know, that in a few years and see where we're at. So did yeah. you, did you respond to her and say, and honey, if you want me to quit wrestling, just let me know. And I will No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cause I didn't even need to say that <laughs> No, because she knows that I would do that for her. It, it would have been funny with the, the rumor swirling. <laughs> yeah. You know, what? you know, what's pretty funny actually is, is, uh, the Maddie's uh, coach in Scotland's like, we'll get you, a, we'll get you a passport. We'll get you a Scottish Scottish passport and you can come wrestle here. Like you can be the national team guy here. And <laughs> I'm like, well, Gilman probably have my head if I, if I, <laughs> I was just going like to say. So yeah, that'd be, that'd be funny. But yeah. I'm like, you know, if Maddie is in Scotland for a long time, I would consider moving over there, but uh, she'll be back. Lord willing. Uh, 2024 at the latest um beginning of 2024 so really only another year in scotland at at most so um, and she's really been like she's been playing soccer for other cities since like you guys both graduated right she went to utah for two years and then uh kansas city bought their team and then she went there for two years and right at the end of this season uh she asked to get released because she wanted to go play in scotland it's so. crazy. I remember you called me one time. I forgot what tournament it was, but you were leaving the tournament. You're like, yeah, I'm just driving to Utah. I'm like, dude, I can barely drive from Rochester to Buffalo. Drive yeah. to Utah. But yeah, that's awesome, man. I- I'd encourage every Christian listening to to pray for the marriage because that's I'm sure that's not an easy thing. But you guys are killing it. All right, Jason. I think that's all I got for you. Any any final words aside from everybody go sign up. I'm going to link it up wherever this is. If you're listening to it, it'll be in the podcast description. If you're watching on YouTube, Rockfin, it'll it'll be on there. So go check it out and tweet us. Let, let us both know. I always love feedback too. So tweet us both. Give us feedback. Like Jason said, he wants feedback so they can continue to improve the product and continue to give the best experience possible and provide value. Yeah, everybody. Just like Justin said, uh, you know, it's app.athletesocean.com. And, you know, I have my subscription group set up. We're going to continuously add more content. I also have uh, two technique videos up there. One's free. And then uh, the other one is on technical takedown finishes. So, you know, um, if you're struggling, trying to figure out how to finish your takedowns, you know, make sure you check that out and ask questions on the instructional videos as well. I'm more than happy to answer those as well. And so, comment on YouTube or Rockfin on, on this video. Comment what Jason's next video should be. Because John clearly isn't doing much. So he's got time to record a couple yeah, of strong got, videos. Got all the time in the world. <laughs> yeah. I saw his office, dude. Like, it, it's cool to watch his career. I, I've talked to him a few times at, like, NCAA Blaze and stuff. But, you know, he's pretty active with, with sharing about his career. And it's so cool to watch Anybody who wants to be involved in content creation, John's a great guy to watch because he's just taken every opportunity possible from working with Askren to Scrap Life to NLWC. And just it's like the kid doesn't say no to anything. And that's how you build. It's a lot of people want to kind of just this is what I think I'm worth. Pay me versus no, just run to the opportunity and the, the money will always come later if you're good. Yeah, That's what John says. He's like, I'll just do your I'll do uh, stuff for free for people. And then if they like it, they'll pay me later. Right. So it's, I mean, I still now and then I'll, I'll still do stuff for free, whether I just want to, or whether I think the opportunity is there to, to do something else later. So, all right, Jason, go enjoy some ice cream. When's the next time you're competing? This is my last story. Okay. This is my last story. 
I, I wanted to go get a milkshake last night and everywhere was closed. Dairy Queen was closed. Creamery was closed. Meyer Dairy. So I'm like, all right, Cold Stone. I go to Cold Stone. I drive about 15 minutes and it's right before close. They're like, our ice cream machine's broken. <laughs> or they're like, they're like, uh, my milkshake machine's broken. We can't make milkshakes. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I got, I had to get something while I was there. I got like a bowl or something. Then I'm like, I'm going to go to Sheets and get a milkshake there. <laughs> After the ice cream at Cold Stone? Yeah, I had like a large, I got, I got, I had a got to have it from uh, Cold Stone. And then I went and got a milkshake uh, from, from Sheets. So this is my week after competing. So I can just eat whatever I want, which is nice. But I'm, I plan on competing next in Croatia in the beginning of February. So I'm excited for that. That's a ranking series, right? Over there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll yep. be a good one. Croatia took a tough loss today to Argentina. Speaking of soccer, yeah, who do, you, who do you think wins? You think Messi gets his World Cup? I think so. I do too. Maddie, Maddie's a big Messi fan. I was trying to tell her, I'm like, man, I hope Messi and Ronaldo play each other. And she's like, Ronaldo, no one cares about Ronaldo. I was it's like, all Messi, dude. Like all the casual soccer fans love Messi. Like yeah. the people who only tune in to the World Cup, like, oh, Messi's got to get his his. World Cup final, like, dude, you haven't watched soccer in four years, three years. Like, yeah. shut up. What are you talking about? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. All right, Jason, yeah. go enjoy some ice cream, man. We'll chat. Congrats on the launch. Yeah, Appreciate it. And the beat goes on.